सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली or let's say more practically have you ever wondered why legal documents are just so tediously incomprehensible and hard to read well the answers to these and other bits of unusual research were awarded this year's ig nobel prizes the ig nobel prizes are of course a satire they parody the name nobel ig nobel means not noble and that's the pun in the name but these prizes are actual research prizes awarded to unusual or very trivial bits of scientific research their objective is to first make you laugh and then make you think they are also awarded as a form of criticism as they have been for homeopathy and the prizes are presented by nobel laureates since 1991 10 prizes are awarded each year in various categories which keep changing year on year these have been things like our cats both liquid and solid an alarm clock that runs away a literature prize to nigerian scammers for creating a rich variety of characters with back stories for showing that people slip less and fall when they wear socks outside of their shoes and things like that while these prizes are often for humorous research they can in fact actually go on to inspire actual research and even real change The most famous of these prizes was in 2006 in biology for a piece of research that showed that malaria mosquitoes were attracted to a particular type of cheese. This cheese was then later directly used in traps in Africa to combat malaria. Andre Gaim, the only person to have won both a Nobel and an Ig Nobel prize, won the humorous award first for magnetically levitating a frog and this inspired China's lunar gravity simulator. Now this year's 10 winners are equally amusing and entertaining. The Applied Cardiology Prize focused on blind dating and how people get along. Sometimes even when someone we meet theoretically satisfies all of our requirements there tends to be no attraction but often although someone doesn't there is a lot of attraction to figure out what gives rise to mutual attraction the researchers performed a blind speed dating experiment with 140 people they predicted that people with mutual attraction would mirror body movements and heart rates and they discovered that indeed yes those who are instantly attracted to each other immediately had their heart rates synchronize the art history prize now this study focuses on the late classical mayan period from 600 to 900 ce the art and pottery from this period shows a lot of games and human sacrifice and lots of depictions of human enema Mayans used to perform medicinal enema and this is documented but these depictions show that they also performed the enema with intoxicating substances for fun the researchers did the tried and tested method of self experimentation and tested the efficacy of intoxicating enemas they concluded that the research supports that a person can get drunk with the same amount of alcohol no matter which end it goes in through A defense mechanism many animals have is autotomy or voluntarily detaching a part of their body to escape predators. Spiders can detach their legs, lizards can detach their tails and as do some scorpions. The anatomy of a scorpion's tail system includes their stinger as well as their anus. So once they detach their tail systems they actually have no way to defecate although they consume food. The researchers wanted to know what happens when a scorpion loses its tail and anus and then gets constipated over the next few days because it cannot excrete. Does this increasing body mass slow down the scorpion's movement and locomotive abilities and does it affect their mating prospects?
Turns out, not really. They are perfectly fine for a while, whether they excrete or not. They move equally fast and males can still go on to mate with females before, well, eventually dying of constipation. The authors of the Economics Prize note that qualities that are often presented for great success fall within a normal Gaussian distribution around a mean. If there's an average number of hours put in for work by all people, some people work more hours than average and some people work fewer hours than average, but no one really works a billion times more hours than others. This holds true for all inputs and parameters, including average talent and average intelligence. And yet, there are a large number of poor people while just a handful are billionaires. So, the authors conclude that there must be some other ingredient that tilts the scale and that is random luck. They show that in any field, it is not always the most talented people who reach the highest levels of success, but the averagely talented but luckier people. The study further elaborates on efficient strategies for public funding based on these findings. This is a design finding more than anything for knobs or instruments that are rotary. The researchers used 32 volunteers to turn 45 wooden knobs of various diameters. They found that the larger the diameter, the more fingers were used to turn the knob. The thumb and the forefinger were used most frequently with extra fingers added as the size and diameter of the knob increased. The authors in the study talked about the importance of good universal knob design, especially for the elderly who would rather use knobs than lever style handles. Everyone knows that legalese flies over most people's heads and legal documents are just ridiculously hard to understand. There are experts, of course, who say that the language is so, so as to avoid loopholes and incorporate technical text. But there are critics who say that law is built on simple concepts and legal texts should just be simple and plain, but is complicated because of psycholinguistics or the psychology of language. The researchers analyzed texts with up to 10 million words in two experiments which focused on things like archaic words no longer used today, like aforesaid or herein, non-standard capitalization, like random words that are in all caps. They compared this with texts in standard English. Then they tried to replace legal jargon with simpler terms without losing meaning or nuance, and they found that it was more comprehensible to lay readers. The authors concluded that legal texts are so convoluted not because they have to be comprehensive or technical, but because they are just poorly written. A lot of patients undergoing some forms of very toxic chemotherapy end up with a condition called oral mucositis because chemo breaks down the cells that line the intestinal tract leading to subsequent infections. Patients can develop sores in their mouths and tongue and can have difficulty swallowing. Combined with the constant nausea from the treatment, it can be almost impossible for some people just to consume any kind of food. Usually, people suck on ice chips to relieve this discomfort, but not everyone likes ice chips and patients do not follow the ice chip method generally. Children often are provided ice cream, so this study examined adults who had ice cream instead of ice chips when they had stem cell transplants. Patients were asked to eat the ice cream slowly and let it thaw in their mouths. The findings show that fewer people who had ice cream developed oral mucositis, indicating that ice cream is in fact a very beneficial supplement to chemotherapy. Gossiping is generally thought to be a socially negative behavior, but the authors of this paper say that gossip can be useful for social bonding. 
Sharing information about one person, a target, to another person, the receiver, can be a good strategy for cooperation between the gossiper and the receiver, especially when there are conflicting interests. The information can be positive, negative or neutral, but it should be honest. If a gossiper is lying constantly at a large magnitude, it would be hard to trust them, so cooperation becomes difficult. But small white lies are usually considered to be harmless. The authors say that a free rider in a group who can't be punished directly can be punished through gossip, but the person who's the subject of the gossip, the target, can find out the gossiper's identity and ostracize them. So, how do people decide when to lie and when to tell the truth when they're gossiping? The authors theorize that the outcome should be to maximize the fitness socially of the receiver of the information for them to decide if something is the truth or not and for the gossiper to decide whether they should lie or say the truth. This is called fitness interdependence where both parties influence each other's social success. So there are four outcomes. One is where the gossip is beneficial to all parties including the target. The other is when it is costly to both the receiver and the target, or it is some negative information. A third possibility is that the gossip is beneficial to the receiver, but costly for the target, or some advantageous information, which also offers benefit to the gossiper. The fourth is when a piece of gossip is beneficial to the target, but costly for the receiver. All of this also influences the gossiper's fitness socially. The study concluded that in terms of fitness interdependence, when there is a perfect match, the gossiper must always be honest. And when there is a perfect mismatch, the gossiper must always be dishonest. We know that birds fly in formation because flying in another bird's slipstream could reduce energy expenditure. This is what cyclists do as well. They ride in the slipstream of others and reduce their output, their power output, by as much as 35% because of reduction in wind resistance. But this hasn't been quantified in animals while it has in cyclists. This is because animals keep changing their positions. However, Mallard ducks and their young imprint immediately and they always swim in a single line. So they are easier to study. The researchers studied the wave interference on the surface of the water as ducklings swam behind the mother. And they discovered that the ducklings rode the waves generated by the mother to reduce drag. Subsequently, they also passed that reduction of drag down to the ducklings behind them in line. Thus, all individual ducklings exert much less energy than the mother and can start to swim within just about half a day after they are born. As humanity ventures more and more into the wild with territory expansion, there are increased road accidents. These include animals in many places and in Scandinavia, they include collisions on the road with moose or elk. Apparently, 13 collisions with moose occur on a daily basis in Sweden. And this is more common with young calves that are newly left to fend for themselves. These calves have just been separated from their mother and they wander about randomly. So Jens, the researcher, decided to build a usable crash test dummy in the form of a moose, which car manufacturers could use in their safety research. He learned the anatomy of the moose, he says, from a recently killed and still warm deer. He found that when collision occurs with a car, first the animal's legs are hit, which don't have much of an impact, but then the body of the animal turns and crashes on the windshield and the car, causing a much larger impact. The dummy made of rubber and steel has been useful as a crash test dummy for standing moose, and the author says he's very happy that the testicles look exactly like vehicles in moose collisions. But the dummy works for stationary moose and not for moose. <laughs>